Did you suddenly find yourself having to work from home? Or maybe you're one of those guys who made a conscious choice to work from the comfort of your home. Well, look no more because in today's video, I have three tips to get you working from home like a champ. Tip number one, and the most important one for me at least, is to make sure that your sacred sleeping space, your living space, is as far away from your home office space as possible. What do I mean by that? That means you should never ever bring your laptop or bring anything related to work on your bed. Now, I guess I'm kind of fortunate that I have a separate bedroom and a separate living and dining area. And if you have the same thing, I suggest once your workday starts, do not, do not, do not bring your work into your bedroom. Personally, my routine is the moment I wake up, I leave my bedroom and I close the door shut behind me. I he then head on straight to the living area where I set up my work laptop, making sure that it's as far away, it's literally at the furthest corner away from my bedroom, which is the dining table. And that's where I get my workday started. So what's the benefit of making sure that your sleeping space and your working space are as far away from each other? Well, personally, it gives me a lot of peace of mind in that once I'm in my work zone, I'm in my work zone. I don't feel the temptation to nap and I don't feel the temptation too much to go on YouTube or go on Netflix and just get distracted. At least I know once I'm at my workstation in front of my laptop at the dining table, I'm on work mode and that's how I'll be staying for the rest of the day. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and hit the like button if you find this video has any value at all for you. Another benefit of separating your sleeping or life space from your workspace is that you can snack and you can grab a drink at your workspace. And I say that because personally, I don't want to have crumbs or spill drinks on my bed. You know, after a work day, I want to make sure that I go to sleep and rest on a clean surface. I don't have to worry too much about you know, waking up with bugs or insects all over me because I drop biscuit crumbs or I spilled some juice or coffee on my bed. So not only is it a good thing productive wise, but it's also a clean and not gross thing to do. You know what I mean? And a bonus benefit for making sure that your living or sleeping space is separate from your workspace is that when work gets a little bit too much, you can actually take a break. You can close your laptop or close your notebook and walk away from that space. And I think that's super important. I know there's a lot of talk about how working from home gets you a little bit more tired than the usual. And I have to say, this is something that myself and some good friends are feeling. At least when you have your workspace set in one place only and you move to other areas of your house or your condo or maybe even just your hallway, it feels like you're taking a break from work. It feels like you can get away from it. And I think that's a very important psychological move for you to be able to move away from a workspace or a stressful space and move somewhere where you can feel a little bit more calm, a little bit more safe, and hopefully a little bit more relaxed. The second tip to make sure that you're working from home like a champ is to make sure that you put time buffers between every meeting or as much as possible every meeting that you have online or every work chunk of time that you have uh, for your work. What do I mean by time buffers? See, before this whole work from home thing started, we had things like snack time, break times, we had travel times, we had walk times, and my personal favorite, coffee time. You know, where you go grab a cup of coffee with some friends. That also really helps stimulate thinking and helps you observe the world around you and get some fresh air, which is super important. What working from home has taken away from us are those little time buffers in between meetings or in between long focus hours. And that's really bad because we end up working for so long without standing up or we end up working so long and much longer than our usual hours. That can't be healthy for us. Back before this whole work from home started, we could set aside 30 minutes to grab a cup of coffee with friends. We could set aside an hour to travel from one meeting to another. And those time periods, those little break times in between 
where your brain is super focused on work actually helps us cope a little bit better with the stresses of the job. At least that's what I think so. Working from home, that's really taken out all of those time buffers, those breaks in between meetings and focus hours away from us. I know what you want to ask now. How do you get those time buffers out of your day? And I think it's quite simple. Try to set your meetings yourself with your colleagues. And when you do so, I highly suggest that you carve out 10 to 15 minutes in between each meeting. Don't, don't be super crazy about making sure that your calendar is full from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 5, and 5 to 6. That's a sure recipe for burnout. As much as possible, try to give yourselves 10 to 15 minutes. I think that's enough. 10 to 15 minutes in between every meeting. And you can do so many things that are good for you in those 10 to 15 minutes. For one, you can stand up and leave your workspace. Go to another corner of the house. Go to your bedroom. Go to a balcony if you have one. Take a deep breath of fresh air just to reset and regain your composure for the next hour or two hours or maybe even three hours of meeting time. You can also use that time to grab a quick snack. Personally, I'm a cereal snacker and I think it's healthy if you do it right. Uh, you don't have to like pump yourself with junk food or chug soda, but you can grab a very quick bite, maybe get a biscuit, grab a piece of fruit, and that's just something to keep you going, give you some energy to go throughout the rest of your day. Another way that you can use that 10 to 15 minute uh, time buffer is that could be your refreshment break. And when I say refreshment, you can either grab a drink, refresh yourself, or you can go to the bathroom, splash some water on your face, or you know, take a bathroom break. Finally, if you have ever told yourself that you did not have time to exercise during this work from home thing happening with us right now, those 10 to 15 minute breaks are the perfect solution for your no time workout uh, excuses. I mean, think about it, 10 minutes, what can you do in 10 minutes? It doesn't have to be a full blown session. As anybody who's ever tried a four minute Tabata workout, for example, of nothing but burpees and jumping jacks will tell you, four minutes is going to be the longest four minutes of your life. So in those 10 to 15 minute chunks, you can actually do quite a lot of exercises if you really want to. For example, on a 10 minute break, you can spend the first two minutes just stretching. Move your arms around, move your legs around. Maybe you can do a light jog in place. And for the next two minutes, maybe you can do some bodyweight squats. And if you're up for it, maybe you can do a minute's worth of push-ups. You do that three to four times throughout the day and you've just gotten yourself a pretty good basic bodyweight workout. In fact, that's how I've managed to sneak in a lot of my workouts. Um, colleagues, if you're watching this, in those 15 minute breaks between meetings, yes, I am on my NTC app and trying to complete a quick seven to eight minute workout. And yeah, that's about it. If you can carve out some, of, some time buffers in between meetings, you can do so much with those 10 to 15 minute chunks for your sanity and make sure that you enter every single meeting every single focused chunk of hours for work with you know not just fresh mind but a fresh body as well and the third and final tip to making sure that you work from home like a champ is to make yourself as comfortable as possible in your work from home environment there's been this thing going around that says we're not really working from home we're at home trying to work and i have to agree with that the home is not necessarily an environment that's designed for work, not even just the work mindset. I mean, unless you're an entrepreneur and you're used to working from home, for the vast majority of us, this is our safe haven from the stresses of our Monday to Fridays or Monday to Saturdays, depending where you're working. This is supposed to be our safe space. This is supposed to be the four walls that work is not allowed to get into. But unfortunately, things have changed. So what I would suggest is you make this time and this situation for yourself as comfortable as possible. What do I mean by that? That would mean first investing in tools and products that will help you be as comfortable as possible when you're working from home. That could start with a really nice work chair. Uh, this is something that I personally am having a problem with. Most of my dining chairs, well all my dining chairs, 
are not designed to be sat on for eight hours in a day. They're just not that comfortable. And over the last couple of weeks, I found my back hurting. So I've had to make some adjustments. I've had to select different chairs so that I could sit a little bit better and be more comfortable when I'm in front of my laptop. Another thing that you should think of is lighting. Is there sufficient light for you to work in? I mean, sure, there are lights at home, but are they really optimized for you to be looking at a screen throughout the whole day? Maybe not. A desk lamp does wonders and they're super cheap. In fact, even at work, I'm known for having a desk lamp all the time at my table. I just think it blends this warm vibe when you're working, just eases the stress a little bit, and it helps balance out all that blue glaring light out of your laptop. So a good chair and good lighting would go a long way into making you comfortable in your work from home space. Another way to be more comfortable when you're working from home is to make sure that you're dressed for comfort. Now that doesn't mean you're just in your birthday suit or you're in a raggedy t-shirt and a boxer shorts for bed. No, what I mean are probably something that you would wear after you just came from the gym and you'll be going to grab a cup of coffee afterwards. You know, something presentable, but also loose and comfortable. Now that has a lot of benefits, aside from the fact that it's very comfortable, is that those materials are usually quite breathable, which means in the heat, I live in Manila, so we can talk about heat. The heat is a little bit more bearable, you're a little bit more comfortable, and you're not worried too much about rising electricity costs because you, know, you don't have to switch on your aircon. Uh, or multiple fans at one time. Another reason why you could wear these comfortable clothes is that if you do decide to do your little 10 to 15 minute workouts between meetings, you can. And you won't feel too bad about you know getting them all sweaty as compared to if you were wearing a full-blown button-down shirt and pants uh, and shoes. I don't know anybody who wears shoes while working from home, but if you do, good for you, man. And those are my three tips to get you working from home like a champ. If you think I forgot something, which I probably did, please put them in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think. I'd love to get your tips as well because it looks like we are going to be working from home for a much longer time than we all thought. So yes, if you have anything that you think I should know about in terms of tips or advice of how I can optimize my work from home experience, please make sure to comment below. If you like this video and found it useful, please hit like and subscribe to the channel. I'd also love to hear your thoughts, so don't forget to leave a comment. I have a new video every week, and so if you're interested in self-help and motivation, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.